Gotta be true to yourself. In a world there's nothing else. nothing else. Gotta play the game right, gotta make your path. You scratch, you dig, you lay on your ground, you busting your rounds. Nobody gonna stop you. No ops, no cops, everything about you. Looking good, you good, she good. She good. Y'all people really wanna know the reason. What's that? It's that ripple effect. That's just that ripple, ripple. That's just that ripple effect. What you do, come back home. So thanks to ripple. Tisha, owner of New Orleans hey, Bistro, Cajun Cafe. Like you already know what it is and you already know the vibes. Yo, shout out to all the supporters. Listen, I have a very special guest with me today. Why is this special? Because I like to promote small businesses, especially small black owned businesses. This is my man, Gordon. Artifacts, 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 and artifacts. We're here talking about seven artifacts, right? Yes, we talk, yes, we're yes. gonna be talking about a lot of things. You know, you already know me. NBA, NFL, everything in between. So we got to get right into this. Um, I know that you are a poet. Yes. I've seen some of your small films. I invite you to go see it as well. It's definitely on YouTube. It's on Instagram. And so just, man, just break it down for me about how this all started. Seven Artifacts. That sounds real biblical, you know, so break it down. For me. Okay. Okay, everybody. So <laughs> the name of my brand is called Seven Artifacts. It means completed works for timeless. Uh, seven meaning complete from the biblical perspective and artifacts because anything I write or uh, complete uh, anything I put out there it will live forever so it will always be there uh, just I'm using uh, poetry in my short films and apparel as a way to leave my mark also as a way to express myself as a black man in America because a lot of times we don't have an outlet to do that. So I use my brand as my outlet because I know a lot of us can relate to a lot of the issues and things that are going out there right now. And it doesn't necessarily just have to be negative or just you know about social injustice and police brutality. It could also be about uh, love, relationships, our families. Um, you know, I, I even have a poem about, you know, talking about my love for sneakers because you know, a lot of us are sneaker heads. We, we stay with a pair retro uh, Jordans or a pair of Yeezys or a pair of Air Forces, some Tims, something. So, yes. <laughs> At the end of the day, that is how we express ourselves, right? A lot of it doesn't always have to be struggle, right? It could be our love for yes. something. And it's so great that you do that for the community because at the end of the day, I think we're all still in a search. When I mean all of us, I mean the black community, right? So we're not necessarily trying to search for a leader. Yes. We're searching for ourselves. A lot of us are on 23 and me, right? You know, we're, yeah. you know, sitting there trying to find our ancestry. We're going out there and trying to question everything. And I always invite people to question everything, but you also got to be careful, right? You know, um, yes. there's a lot of certain situations where a lot of people have gotten themselves into trouble. And at the same time, it's like, you want to, you want to back them, right? You want to sit there and say, listen, I understand where you're coming from, especially being another black person. Cause we, Man, if you don't know where you're where you're from, how do you even know where you're going, oh, right? Oh, you know, I say that all the time. Because it's so true. Like history yeah. repeats itself for a reason, right? Like yes. if you and how are we supposed to know where we're supposed to be at if we don't even know? So, I mean, you know, I it, love that. And it's funny that you say that because um, part of, part of the reason I was inspired to create seven artifacts and I started writing poetry during COVID because I started I wrote my first poem in 2021. It was called "It Doesn't Matter." And part of the inspiration behind it was watching the Michael B. Jordan movie Without Remorse. Because he had a line in there when he was talking with his CEO in jail. And uh, don't quote me word for word, but he was basically just saying it doesn't matter what we do, we're always looked at as less than because of the color of our skin. Because, you know, he was like, we fight for the country, we protect the country, uh, we do what we're supposed to do, and we're still looked at as, as less than. You know, like, we're, we're not as good. Uh, we we can compete and also uh, excel i mean exceed expectations oh of course you know so that that inspired that one but another thing that inspired me too was i was doing ancestry um on ancestry.com it's funny you said 23 and me because i actually found out on my mother's father's side uh that i'm a descendant uh, of course of slaves but also slave owners Oh, cool. Yeah, so you know, somebody, so that's deep. yeah, somebody you know mixing things up in there. So <laughs> I found out, I found out the history. So yeah, that, that definitely, and it, it wasn't surprising because that's where most of us come from. Yeah. But at the same time, it's different when you find out the who, the what, the where, the when. Like you can put well, faces can to the names. 
Yeah, like, oh, so this is the, the family that owned my family? Like, I know yeah. that now. It yeah. Was, it was the, the Kilby family in Culpeper, Virginia. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you really, like, narrowed it down and was able to yeah. track it. Yeah. You see, and, and I think, you see, that's huge because at the same time, it's like, you have to understand where you come from because yeah. sometimes I feel like, I'm also studying psychology. I don't know if I ever told you that. No, you did. It's cool. So, Part of it is because I like to be able to understand people. You know, I've already kind of, you know, went to the med medicine side of things, you know, as a paramedic, understanding why things happen. But sometimes you always want to try to understand the chicken or the egg, right? Like why are things the way they are, socioeconomically speaking, or even just, you know, psychologically speaking? Right. Because that has to be some inner turmoil. You know, one thing I never really understood, right? So we understand PAP, um, PTSD, right? And yes. especially in terms of, we always talk about it in terms of the military though. So we understand that, okay, so when they go away for four years, eight years, however long their tour is, they're gonna come back, they're gonna have some psychological ramifications of yes. what they've seen or been yes. asked to do, right? Okay. So it's like four or 500 years of slavery, then when you say like 200 mm. more years of redlining and mm. you know criminal injustice, yeah. you know, like when you look at all these different things, it's like, Jim Crow Reconstruction, which is a, which is a terrible name to call it when you look at the black community, right? Yes. Like, I mean, when you, when you think of, you know, uh, it, it, I don't know. When you just sit there and just think about all those things, how could that not lead to some type of PTSD? Oh, it, it mean, does. You know what I mean? No, it does. And another thing I think people don't realize, even in our own culture, is that even though slavery was... 400 years ago, the things that happened to our ancestors also happened to our great grandparents, then our grandparents, then some of our parents, and maybe some some of that to us. So it's our job, you know, to break generational curses. Right. You know, because it's just like I feel like, you know, uh, like on my mother's side, my grandmother broke a gener generational cur curse. She was, um, uh, she I think she was the first in her family. Uh, media family to go to college. Wow. And this is back Excuse in, oh man, she was 95 when she passed away. So I think she was born in 1920, 1921. Ooh. So for her to go to college back then and achieve that, because a lot of us didn't have that opportunity and so forth. So then after that. Especially being a woman. You're talking about women's suffrage around that time. Yes. You know, yes. That's big. Yes. Um, yeah, because she was from uh, rural, rural North Carolina. Oof. Yeah. yeah, so and yeah. made a good life for herself, settled in Washington, D.C., wow. got married, uh, had two children, my mother and my uncle, and uh, also worked for the federal government, I believe, for 30, 35 years. Wow. So she she literally she got it from the mud. She, oh, came oh, from, yeah. she came from nothing oh, yeah. and, and made it, and she was breaking generational curses, I'm pretty sure. My mom and my uncle broke some. Now, you know, I'm trying to keep it going. Like, yeah, it passed me the full time. I'm just trying to keep going forward. Yeah, that's that's powerful stuff, man, when you actually can see that. I mean, think about how much confidence that even gets you. Even when you're going through your worst of times, you have to sit there and think, man, like, I'm not going through anything in comparison. No. Like, you know what I mean? And that's and where you remind yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to, just to put things into perspective, because I know a lot of times, you know, we think we have it hard, but when you, when you have something to look, you know, back at and say like wow if my grandmother was able to do this and this was right before the great depression yes you can only imagine you know like and then you gotta look at the immigration of like irish and you have to think about like jobs being taken like yeah. there was so many different things that she probably had to deal with that she probably oh, yeah. wouldn't even you know and another thing yeah. i wanted to talk about is because uh, is um um you know how they say hurt people hurt people yes. right yes. so if we're dealing with all that hurt Mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of years yes we are passing it down yeah you know in some way somehow you know whether it's you know actually through you know um the way we eat the way the way we celebrate the way we do different things our faith yes. you know it's all integrated in that somewhat you it, know? Is. it is um because a lot of us don't even realize it and i think sometimes that's why we see like so much hate and negativity towards each other we should be uplifting one another because we don't even realize we're doing that to each other sometimes you know because our mindset is all messed up because it goes back to what you said a lot of us don't know where we come from so we don't know where we're going because if we really knew where we come from like you know africa egypt being kings and queens like we didn't like just 
we weren't born slaves. Right. You know, we, we actually come from a rich culture. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's yes. why I'm, I'm in the history, uh, especially, you know, civil rights and also learning about slavery, pre-slavery, just anything about our culture, because we need to know that. Because I feel like yes. a lot of us did, like as a whole, we would be in better shape. Oh yeah, for sure. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's literally what I was trying to tie all together is yeah. the fact that what we do to each other, yeah, we can easily talk about what's going on outside our race, yes. but we have to really figure out what's going on at home, yes. what's going on even internally. Yes. You know what I mean? And then realize once you're self-aware and you're like, okay, this is what I'm putting out there and that's that's wrong. Yeah. So how can I be better? So that way when I have a family and I one day settle down, I can pass down, you know what I mean, not hurt. Yes. You know, or at yes. least how to deal with that hurt. Yes. You know, so that that's awesome that you said that because I think that's what we suffer from so much is because we don't know where we're going and we're kind of just lashing out on each other. And I see that all the time. And that's one, that's like one of my biggest pet peeves. I, like, I know a lot of, especially celebrities, you know, out here when they have so much influence and they're talking oh. bad about each other, yes. about each other, all this type, all types of names. You know, I'm not even gonna, you know, address any names on here, but you already know what I'm talking about. Oh, and yeah. it's like, yeah. why can't we do that behind closed door? Like, DM somebody, reach out. You know what I mean? Try to make it more of a, or if you do it out in public, make it more of a teachable moment and not like trying to tear somebody down. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's like the biggest thing when you tear somebody down. In your own culture, what do you, what exactly what representation are you putting out there for the world? What is your legacy going to be? Right, right. Because one thing I've noticed over the years, and this is just from being a child all the way up until now, a lot of conflicts that happen between people is you know it's normally over dumb stuff or misinformation. And half the time, a lot of stuff could just be settled if the people that had the conflict just sat down just like me and you and just talked about it. That's right. Not all the time, but probably <laughs> most of right. the time and a lot more of the time, it could just be resolved. Like you sit down, you know, have a drink, right. you know, eat a pizza or something. I don't know, it, you know, so probably got to smoke a blunt, whatever. But it's true, it's you, whatever. And then they probably be surprised how much they really have in common. You might be related. You probably got some of the same friends, know some of the same people. <laughs> Y'all probably could like work together and get something right. done, you know, because I've seen sometimes where enemies actually end up becoming the best of friends and find out, hold up, we can do this, this, and this, you know? So I, you know, just- It's so true I, because I know. think it's, it's also because we're not willing to see another perspective. We're not trying to see another side. Right. What I've noticed, at least in my short <laughs> life so far, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like, People are never 100% right, and people are never 100% wrong. And I, I don't want to say like never. I just mean that they're coming from a place that maybe we not may not understand. Maybe in from our perspective, it just seems all right, dead wrong. But why did they come there? Like what what happened? Mm. You know what I? That's always been like my sort of thing. Like yeah. there's got to be a little bit more to it than just that. You know, like like you said, it, how do you go from being enemies to the best of friends. That only happened because somebody wasn't completely wrong and somebody wasn't completely right. Right. You know, miscommunication is huge. But oh, I think that's a lot the of biggest people, one. A lot of people don't know how to communicate. I realized that too in my class because we don't understand how how we how we how we put out information and then we don't understand how others may perceive that information. That's what I mean about right or process yeah. that information. Yeah. And that's what I mean about being 100% right and 100% wrong. Right. You don't know how they process that information. Right. And by understanding where they're coming from with that information may give you a little insight to their perspective and realize like, okay, you're not 100% wrong. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it obviously depends on, you know, exactly what you're talking about. But right. a lot of times in our community, when I'm sitting here looking at things, being completely objective, mm -hmm. I'm like, why are you... Like, but like you said, like we needed Dr. King and we we needed Malcolm X. Like. Yeah, we did. We did need both. And, and the crazy thing is, that near the end of their lives, they saw they saw each other's perspectives. Yep. Because just like King said, I fear I, 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 I fear I led my people into a burning house. But then Ooh. Malcolm X believed, ended up 
realizing that all white people were a devil. Because exactly. that, because that's not true. Because hate, you're not born to hate. Hate nope. is taught. Like no, yes. no, one, no one was born to be that way. No, you know, no one was born to be superior or no. above someone else. Right. That's taught. Yes. Or whatever. So, yeah, no, I definitely don't pay attention to that. That's so, awesome because yeah. it's like I I love history as well, and a lot of things that I like to look into is especially when it comes to, especially since it's MLK Day, you know, so we'll give a shout out to Dr. Yes, you know, happy Martin MLK King. Day. That's right, you know, um, and one of the things that, you know, when everybody kept saying about his speech, you know, and he kept talking about, you know, let freedom ring, and when he kept talking about, you know, the I have a dream speech, yes. it's so funny because that was never what the the title was that, that speech was. Like, they, that's, the name of that speech was after he already had given the speech. Like I that never was, knew that. Yeah, like that was. I never not, knew that. Yeah, it wasn't. I, so I have days. a dream speech. You know what I mean? I have a dream, and then all of a sudden he just wrote no. Like, Go to school today. It, yeah, <laughs> it was it was an impromptu when he just decided to keep saying, you know, I have a dream, and they kept. You know what I mean? Like that was that was something that wasn't necessarily um, planned, and also in that speech he actually tries to he actually starts to change his mind about nonviolence. Like if you, if you, I, that's the speech that I probably went over like a thousand times because in one of my classes we were told we had to take a speech and of course there was a lot of speeches from you know a lot of um, JFK speech and you know every other speech that you could choose from but I was of course I was like no I'm gonna choose this one because I wanted to understand it and I wanted to be something meaningful to my community at least to give me more of a perspective on what was going on back in the 60s because I didn't know. So um, when I actually went over that speech and I was like, wow, like when you actually sit there and read it, yeah. he changes his mind. Like he actually, it's, it's just crazy to me because that's why when I say you need Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and you also needed Malcolm X because they were, they were starting to come together. Yeah, they were. And you can tell that that scared a lot of people. And you already know what I mean by the masses, a lot of people, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, because that's dangerous, right? Like, oh, yeah. if, if you're if you're the person who does not want to see progression, yeah. that's dangerous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. two of these great minds coming together, yeah. like, they, they don't want at such young ages. Like, yeah. I mean, when you think about the work that they were able to complete, like, what, before the age of 40? It was I'm not even 40 so no, I'm, not, I'm not either. You know what I'm saying? And I feel so like crazy. compared to them, I'm behind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely so like, behind because what about, what about they the accomplished so much. Yeah, just like, that. and I hate to use this okay. analogy, but it's a good one. Yeah. Just like Biggie and Tupac, look how much yeah. they accomplished. They right. didn't even make it to 30. They, they, I was going to say, yeah, they didn't even make it to 30. Because how much music music Tupac made? How many films was he in? How many music videos did he do? Right. How many people did he impact? Right. You know? So uh, definitely his his music pre death row and not saying uh all eyes on me was bad albums one of my favorites <laughs> right. but it's just the things he was talking about and addressing beforehand yeah you know he was talking about a lot of things going on in our community and actually bringing it to the forefront yeah you know just like uh i know brenda got a baby uh one of my favorite songs i know it was controversial at that time but it needed to be talked about because that's that's real life that's really happening so still happening today. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, that's still prevalent today. Like yeah. that still means something. Yeah, and he was talking about the stuff what, uh, 20, yeah, almost twenty, almost thirty years ago. Almost thirty, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So, when you really, when you really break it down, when you think about, I mean, Tupac was definitely way before his time. Most and, definitely. And I'm glad that, you know what it is like. We have to play ball, right? And then once you're in there, then you can start, you know, um, I guess looking out for your community, so to speak, in terms of. You know, making sure you address certain issues. Because let's let's be frank. If artists come out and just start talking about the issues, I mean, you may get a you know a J Cole or a Kendrick Lamar may slip through the cracks. But for the most part, you kind of have to talk about what people want to hear, right? Trap yeah. music, party music, whatever. Yeah. And then once you kind of get out that out of the way, and then you kind of got yourself to a certain level where you can eat literally, right? And then sit there and say, okay, now I'm going to start talking about the Black Panthers and I'm going to start talking about, you know, all these different things because some people even question Beyonce about why did she wait so long? Like, you have to think about, you know, what you, what you do. You know what I mean? Like, it's, and maybe she's not the best example, but when you sit there and think about what that's, people that's need to, you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. people need to do in order to, you know, Tupac, but, he needed to, he but, needed to get there. But we're in a, a different 
time now because when Beyonce came out though, social justice wasn't at the forefront. It wasn't being discussed as much. You know, she was just, you know, cranking out the hits, whether in with the group or solo, solo mm -hmm. you know, but then with everything going on being brought more to the forefront. And then also another thing that wasn't around, cell phone video. Oh. It's like you it's like you can't deny this stuff now because it's on film. You can't deny it. Like it's it's recorded, it's captured, everybody seeing it. Right. Because you saw the the reaction after uh the death of George Floyd, because even that inspired me to write um a new poem I have coming out called Get Your Knee Off My Neck. Right. That was partially inspiration. And then also um a guy from my area, he actually used to be a comedian on SNL, uh Jay Farrell. Yeah. He had an incident. We're, we're from the same area in Chesapeake. When I saw that happen to him, someone I know, like right. we're not like great friends or anything right. like that, but you know, we, we, grounds, you yeah, know? we, yeah, we, yeah, we were speaking, passing, um, mm -hmm. and I saw, I know some of his family, and I remember I actually uh, spoke to his cousin, like I, I DM'd her, and because she used to be one of my clients when I cut hair, I cut her son, but I was like, uh, did you see what happened? And then, you know, I remember she was saying she was upset about it because he didn't even tell the family or whatever yeah you know but i told her i was like i understand that though because when you go through something like that because uh you know i was in my own situation with law enforcement as well we were speaking pre-show it's right. like i didn't discuss it either right i didn't even realize the impact it had on me until like 10 years later yeah you know is because and i hate to say this but it's like because of what we've seen and what we've been taught because you know your parents had that talk with you and stuff like that it's like you you're almost expecting that to happen yeah you know and, and it's sad because that should it shouldn't be that way right you know we shouldn't have to live live life being worried about oh this may happen we need to be prepared for this situation this that and third because our counterparts don't have to yeah that's true but but we do so yeah. but yeah seeing that and seeing the death of george floyd amar arbery Breonna taylor and countless others definitely inspired me. Well, inspired, um, has inspired a lot of my work that I've written so far. So, so I have a lot of stuff I haven't even released yet. And the only reason why I don't come out with uh, more stuff faster is only because I try to do short films to go along with my poetry as well. That's right, you wanna have context, you know? You also Most wanna, definitely. And I'm sure a lot of this is even therapeutic because if you're not even able to like process it, but if you can find a creative way to explain or to at least show how you feel about it, maybe it would, you know, subconsciously give light to someone else. Yes. To sit there and say, you know what? Not only have I been through this before, but how can I, how can I put this out there where it's not more struck, more, you know, victimization like you said like you don't want to have to carry this burden with you and then oh. you go into the same t teachings with your kids like how do you have that conversation shout out to all the parents out there like how do you have this conversation you know with your children you know especially you know your son your daughter you know um without coming across you know being fearful you know like I'm not a parent, so it's like Tough. like that. That's gonna Tough. be probably one of the toughest things. And no one, when they get their driver's license, that's supposed to be a, you know, a, a monumental thing. Like that's that's a milestone right there, right? Like yeah. that's supposed to be like, yo, you got, you got your first keys to independence. Like yes. you know what I mean? That's when you learn a little bit more about you know time management, which I was bad at. You know, like, I'm still working on it's a work in progress. You know what I'm saying? But. You know, like, um, you, you learn a lot about yourself when you start driving and you start, you know, meeting up with your friends. You start yes. learning a lot about the people who are around you, right? When yeah. things happen, like, who's really in your corner? Yeah. You know, yeah. so at the same time, like, that's why I always want to, um, I think it's so important that people understand themselves, mm -hmm. understand why they were raised a certain way, understand why you are the way you are, because a lot of it comes from the way you know you were raised whether it was out of fear whether it was out of your environment like it's always that nature versus nurture argument yeah you are a part product of your environment you can take it to the extreme and be so anti your environment and it may work for you or you just may end up in a situation one night where it changes your whole life and then you end up becoming a product of your environment like you said you walk around the same street as somebody else who literally had that encounter with the police unfortunately and it's like 
what stopped that from being you? You know what I mean? Like, you know, you, yeah. you just never know yeah. if so that, that you. But that happened at home in California while he was doing uh, morning jog, I believe. He was oh, just, so he was he was just exercising. His... Yeah, he was he was in California. Uh, he was jogging, and next you know, uh, I guess he saw police, but he was like, oh, you know, they're not paying me anymore. I was out here exercising, but no, they were yelling at him, yelling demands at him. Next you know, he was on the ground, knee on his neck. It, it just could have went a lot worse. And then once they found out who he was, then they want to apologize. Then they're like, my bad, but what if it went further than what they already had? Right. Really, they really had no probable cause to do that. You know, they're just like, oh, you fit the description. Well, you probably didn't, because that's their generic response to everything. Oh, you fit the description. Yep. Just like they think all, all black people look the same. Profiling. No, yep. yeah, no, we don't. We don't. <laughs> that's that's fact. We don't. Exactly. So, you know, like I say, even when I saw that, I was like, man, I, I ain't gonna lie, I was upset, especially like I said, seeing that happen to someone uh, that I know, and it, it, it was just a lot. It's it a lot. lot. Yeah, it's definitely a lot. And I can't even tell like what's what's worse nowadays. It's the fact that we know what happens. We have to understand more than what you know our teachers taught us. You know. And, middle school, high school, right? We have to go beyond, you know, yeah. the school because now they call it, what, critical race theory. So now wow. it's very controversial whether they even teach that. So yes. if you're the type of parent that will go above and beyond and teach what's beyond the classroom, then that's why you're going to have more of these people who really don't understand, especially when they look like they're just trying to wipe it away by changing the signs. They are. You they know, are. The but streets. the good thing is, though, we have the internet now. So yes. now you can do your own research right. because... You know, imagine like that. We were back in school. We didn't have access to that unless we had people in our family that no. gave us books right. or gave us the information. Like for me personally, so I went to private school before fifth grade. It was all wow. black. Oh, wow. So that's when I really started learning about about black history. It was wow. it was an all black uh, Christian school, and I'll give them credit for this because I'm not gonna lie, I really did like private school. <laughs> but I I would give them credit for this. They did put in us a strong foundation uh, and showed us that, you know, we can be proud and be black. Be proud of your wow. culture, be proud of your heritage. They made sure we learned about it, like we learned black history that, you know, because we did that and American history, we had to do both. Wow. And, it, and it wasn't just for that month, it was year round. Right. So I was doing two history courses wow. in math and English and PE. Uh, we also had, uh, I can't remember if it was like Bible, call Bible course because it was Christian. Okay, it was Christian. Yeah, so yeah. we had to memorize uh, verses. verses right. Yeah, yeah. Certain hymns and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's... yeah it's funny because on my way here, I was actually talking to one of my good friends. Uh, we were in uh, private school together. That's how we, we met one another. We still friends yeah. today. Oh, that's just... or whatever. I was calling to, calling to check on them and we talk about. Uh, Shout out to Daniel's Christian School. They're not around anymore, but, but shout out to Hey, them. I'm um, sure somebody knows. But we, but even we realize the impact and the foundation that it gave us. Right. Because most of us that came through that school, even though we didn't stay there the whole time through school, most of us are doing well now. Those of us that are still in contact with each other. So, like I said, it just gave us a, a sense of self. You know, at an early age. Knowing your history. Yeah, I'm like, oh, we, we did all this? Yeah. We had so all this efficacy, going on? That, that's everything. Why Especially what? at that age. You said fifth and sixth grade? Fourth and sixth grade. Fourth and no, fourth, no, fourth and fifth, excuse me. Fourth, fourth and fifth, fifth grade. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you see, that that's a that's a very, because you, you know, during that, that time, you know, where a lot of things are funny, you know, yeah. because you're it's like you're getting older now, but you're not an adult yet. You yeah. know, you're not a, quite a teenager yet. But a lot of things are expected of you all of a sudden. Oh, it's it, not funny it, it, anymore. No, nah, right? it was always like that. And <laughs> it felt like, I mean, even though being, um, a, it, growing up and being a child was fun, because I, I can't even lie, I had a pretty good childhood. I had right. a pretty good, pretty balanced uh, childhood. Even though my parents did split when I was 12, they were still both heavily involved. Yeah, right. You know, um, so overall, especially compared to like some of my friends, some of my family, and being older now, I even told my dad this not too long ago. I was like, man, I didn't realize how good I had. <laughs> I, I really didn't, you know, and, and not saying I was an ungrateful kid or anything like that, but just realizing everything that they did and why they did it. Yeah, right. And, you know, I grew up in a, in a pretty good neighborhood. I, I was around different people from different backgrounds. 
um, which may be well rounded. You, I just appreciate it so much now. Right. So we're, much. But remember, kids are a little narcissists, right? Everything's about them. So it's like. Always. You can't and I'm really... only child. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, was, it was probably, oh, yeah, it was it was probably bad you, sometimes. <laughs> so, but just just seeing that now, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. But what, what would you say to people who are like, wait, but we had a black president, right? So we've come so far. Or, you know, you see all these, you know, LeBron James is a billionaire now. Tiger Woods, he's a billionaire now. You know, people are confusing black excellence with the everyday, you know, black reality, right? So what would you say to those people? Well, first off, is as far as with Barack Obama, that was a major step in history. But at the same time, and I think this, this is where people got it confused. One man in the White House for eight years was not going to overturn 400 years of damage. You know, he just wasn't going to be able to go in there like, oh, you get reparations, you get reparations, you get reparations. <laughs> right, some over <laughs> Yeah, that's what, that's what people had to confuse, like, and this is why I'm glad, like, you know, I, I pay attention to history and I have a, a well-rounded view of things because I remember, like, some of my peers and even my younger cousins that were voting at the time, you know, they were just all excited and this, that, and the third, which is nothing wrong with that, but it's like, you know, they they didn't even care about what's, what's Obama's policies. Right. What's he really about? Right. It's just, oh, he's black. We're going to vote for him. <laughs> you know, and I, because I remember I asked one of my cousins one time, I was like, so why are you voting for Obama? He was just like, because McCain is old. I'm like, seriously? Seriously. You know, but he wouldn't say that now, but I just remember that. And I'm just, uh, right. yeah. you know, and, yeah. and don't get me wrong. Um, I feel like, um, President Obama, you know, he did the best that he could, but a lot of people don't realize he had a lot of things against him because a lot, if not all the Republicans, didn't want to work with him because yep. he probably had a Republican Senate or Congress at the time or both, I don't remember. Um, but at the same time, you have, you know, like the, the good old boys club, they never had to listen to or had a black man, let alone a black person, as you know, the top boss, right? Running, running a, a, a company or a business or just anything like they, they probably weren't used to seeing a black person in charge. They couldn't handle that. They couldn't right. battle that. Even Joe Biden, he had some smart remarks <laughs> about about Obama. They're like besties now. Well, you know, remember, he. I mean, he was in Congress for over forty years, right? So he was yeah. around during a lot of times. You know where. He understands the issues that the black people are going, are going through yeah. very well, more than more than most. Yeah. But he chose to ignore it, and he chose to be complicit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what he was. Yes. And yeah, and like you said, he was making smart re remarks at Obama because, like you said, he is from a different era. Yeah. You know what I mean? And responsible for why things are still the way they are now. Most definitely. So why would they be any different just because definitely. Obama's in charge? Like at the end of the day, Biden has a lot of ties. Yes. Ties where he looks like a lot of people yeah, that are in con Congress, a lot of favors that were done over 40, I mean, 40 years, man. Like, I can't imagine working at a job for 40 years, honestly, you know, of influence. Honestly, I, I think he should have been away home, honestly. You know, and not saying he's, you know, doing the worst job because he's still probably better than what the alternative was. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, right. it's, it's like, I feel like there should be an age cap. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's done enough. We know we need some fresh voices, fresh faces in there. That's why uh, it was good to see, uh, I believe it was Hakeem Jeffries oh, yeah. from New York. Yes. That yep. just got yep. named yep. Yep. Uh, speaker, speaker, Speaker of the House. Right. You know, so yeah. Try to keep yeah I, I like that. I like that. Look at that, that Roller Martin on filter because he, he breaks it down so good because ever since I've been yeah. looking at his show, um, I understand politics more. Right. Like why it's important, you know, to vote, what's really going on, why... Uh, state and local is more important than uh, presidential, even though that's important too. But just learning how things work and, you know, why we're, I'm not saying why we're in the position, but why things are the way they are. Yeah, and the why power we're still, structure, why yeah, it's why, balance. Exactly. Yeah. Why, we don't vote for the local and state, yeah. We don't, we don't. And then also, now that we're starting to learn about these things, now they're putting more restrictions and rules in place, so it make it harder make it harder for us to vote and express ourselves and make our voice be heard. Right. You know, because more of us are, are learning like, oh yeah, because now they're trying to 
deter us from doing that. Right. Putting all these obstacles in the way. So, and that's, that's always like my biggest um, thing when I say to people who are always like, oh, why do I need to vote? My vote doesn't count. I just why think like that. Why are you trying so hard for you not to vote? I used to you think like think that. that. <laughs> you know? And, and the crazy thing is, I, I always heard that, like, oh, yeah, they do make it hard for you to vote. But see, I never knew what the tactics were. But like I said, now looking at uh, black platforms like Roller Martin Unfiltered or uh, the Phyllis Scott Show on the African Diaspora Network, just things like that where they break it down to the T. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is all the stuff they do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes, like I said, we're out of touch because just because it hasn't happened to us right. doesn't mean it hasn't happened to someone else. But what about our brothers and sisters in Texas, oh. New York, California, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, North Carolina? Like, it's, it's way different. Not saying this stuff hasn't happened in Virginia, but like I said, for me, I haven't run into any issues trying to vote. If anything, it's worked in my favor because when my grandmother was alive, and she got to vote for Obama twice before she passed away um, in 95. Uh, yeah, Miss Mary B. Jackson. I give my grandma a shout <laughs> there out. There you go. <laughs> um, but she was eligible for early voting. So when I would take her in for early voting, it was right. like, oh, while you're here, you can vote too. Oh, okay. So I had it, I had it made. <laughs> like, you know, Chesapeake show love on, on, on that one. It was like, oh yeah, you can vote while you're here too. I was like, oh really? Got it out of the way. That's what's up. I mean, so I, I've never faced that. Even the other day, um, for where I live at now in the Richmond area, I, I guess um, the smart side of me signed up for um, early absentee voting. Yeah. So they send it to you in the mail, yep. you can fill it out and mail it back. Just you get just out need, the way. Yeah, you just need a witness. Yeah, I, I have that now. I just do yeah. that. You know, don't have anything to worry about, but I make sure I do it. And I, and I try to keep up with what's going on uh, in Virginia and the area that I'm in. I even keep up uh, with stuff that's going on back home in the Tidewater area, just like uh, the former NFL player, Aaron Rouse, that's actually from the Virginia Beach area. Right. He just won, I believe, a Senate seat that was vacant. Wow. They had a special election. And it's funny, oh, man, you're going to laugh. The person he defeated, who was running as a Republican, actually used to be my handyman. <laughs> yes, yes, Yo, yes. Small world. Like, Very that's... small world. I was surprised when I saw Mr. Mr. Adams up there uh, running or whatever. But I mean, you know, he had a he had a good campaign. He's right. a good guy. Right. Uh, right. You know, uh, you know, Christian, family man, uh, really nice guy. He does good work. Honest guy. Uh, but but yeah, uh, Aaron Rouse won the seat. Uh, still staying blue. Right. So. Right. You know, but like yeah, for. yeah, I, you know, yeah. I, I try to pay attention to what's going on. But so, you, but you see how that 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 was a trickle down. That was from your grandmother. Yes. You know, a lot of kids, especially in our community, don't have that. So if you have that mindset of I don't need to vote yeah. because grandma said I don't have to vote, right. right? But that's what makes it more on us, right? This generation, or even the one right below us, right. to like you said, pull out your smartphones. Yeah. understand what the Constitution is like some people just see that as like an old document it's actually a living document yeah. that can and actually impact us every day yes. and it's actually something that we refer to all the time this is why different federal laws or different things are being changed or things you know when you talk about all those big court cases like you don't need to go crazy heavy into the court cases but you do need to understand why they why they exist because yes, it's literally, it's yeah, because you understand yeah. like what happened, like you talking about Brown versus Board of Education, yes. you know, things are like that. We talk Plessy, about versus versus Ferguson. Ferguson. Plessy versus Ferguson. When, yeah. you, when you look, when you actually just kind of just see, oh, a quick summary of what all those things were about, yes. or even the essence of the Constitution of understanding why your local and state governments are more important than the federal because they affect you more on a yes. daily basis. Yes. When you wonder why your DA is like this or like that, you you either didn't vote for them or voted for them. Or like, why you know are the child schools uh, right. underfunded like, and don't have the same resources as you know the area 20, 30 minutes away? Or why your kids are not being taught about you know um, critical race theory? Real history. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or or when are we ever going to get to the point where it's not we're going to learn about U.S. history? or you know American government or whatever and learn about black history. Yeah. Last time I checked, that's all together. 
Yes. That should be all yes. together. Especially, when you keep separating it, it keeps yeah. it, it confuses people. It does. It's, it's not a special little like. Especially when our our ancestors laid the foundation, because people just think you know, oh, America just was created one day, <laughs> and they just sat down and wrote these documents. Oh, there it is. Uh, no, people had to build it up. There was forced free labor. Right. Um, we get no rec recognition for that. Why ancestors get no recognition right. for that? Uh, it's, you know, that that needs to be taught. People need to know that. Like, of course. It, it, yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not. Oh, we. Uh, like our counterparts say, oh, we picked ourselves up out of bootstraps. <laughs> no, you didn't. And then with us, we didn't have any bootstraps. Yeah, exactly. We just, yeah, exactly. Had, to, we just had to figure it out. It's just like, um, out the mind, like. I, I read a book called History of the Black Dollar. I don't know if you ever read it. Nah. It's actually a really good book. And it touched on how um, when slavery was finally abolished um, and when, you know, some of our, our ancestors, you know, they didn't get, uh, what was it, the 40 acres and the mill oh, yeah, yeah, supposed yeah. to get? Yep. So a lot of them uh, were poor, but at the same time, because they had uh, skills from being slaves right. and new trades, they, knew trade, right? they were able to start businesses. And a lot of them started with nothing, like wow. way less than what we had. Like they would literally just have maybe 20 cents to the name, one pair of shoes, one outfit, they probably lived with, with family members or, you know, just stayed up somewhere, maybe sleeping on the floor, literally had nothing wow. and built businesses from the ground up, like literally like out of the mud. That's basically what it was. And that's why I'm like, you know, I feel like more of us, don't get me wrong, everybody doesn't have to be an entrepreneur. Right. I know everybody doesn't want to be, everybody's probably not cut out to be, but I feel like more of us could be because, um, our ancestors did more with less. Way, you know, because they because they had the skills, right? And they had no choice. They had to. You know how they always say, like, you got to make yourself uncomfortable in order to be comfortable. Yes. Like that's where we're at. Yes. Like we're we're at the point where we need to take note of our history. So they were extremely. We'll never understand the level of you know what I mean nah. discomfort that they've had. Now nah, we can only you know I mean? we can only read about it. Like, right. Of course we can read about the financial struggle, but what about the emotional? Like exactly. dealing with the family, dealing with the spouse, Our the yellow invasion in the yep, other room. Yep, yep. And then and then also there's no telling how many families were living together possibly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah. For you sure. know? Yeah. Or families that were split up but then came back together and you're still dealing with the trauma from slavery. <laughs> the, the men and the women, right? You know, uh, being beaten, being raped, being you know assaulted day in, day out. Uh, ain't no telling what effect that that might have had on the children. So it, it's just it's so much to unpack. That's why uh, when you know people act like slavery's no big deal, we've come so far, this, that, and the third. No, there's still a lot of things that need to be addressed. There's a lot of trauma that needs to be healed. Yeah. It's it's, it's almost too much to think about. And it's, it's our job as, I don't even know if we're considered the next generation, maybe we are the generation now, <laughs> I, I don't know. But we just need to try to do what we can. We can't do it all, right? but we, we can do it our, what we can, even if it's just starting that business, uh, maybe uh, getting back in touch with the youth, like you know, maybe just being a mentor to someone, giving someone positive, kind words, uh, supporting someone, just even being a good husband or wife and, and, and raising your family, you know, just just simple Actually stuff. Cause that, a lot. Yeah, because yeah, that creates better people in the community. Right. You know, and that's a lot of stuff that we're missing. That's why there's such an attack on, on the family structure. Mm -hmm. You know, like with fathers not being in the home or maybe uh, the mothers in the streets and things like that, or, you know, just... It's, it's just so much that that's against our, our community. Right. So. And, and a lot of times we're also not helping it. Yeah. I was, um, I, I like to listen to a lot of TED Talks. I'm not sure if you do, but um, yes. it was actually this white guy, right? Um, God bless him, right? So he was sitting there and he was talking to a white crowd, you know, his peers, you could say. Um, his thing was, so when you talk about the music industry, so if I were to, he was like, if I were to, to, um, to ask you guys, like, 
I want to try to think of a song, like a hit song that everybody's going to vibe to. You know, what should I talk about? He talked to a couple of topics. He was just like, should I talk about killing puppies? You know, like just, you know, as long as it got a sick beat on the end, like, what do you guys think? Everybody's like, oh my God, no. Like, nobody would buy that. Like, that's terrible. And he's like, all right, all right, 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 right. Let's talk about, you know, beating a bunch of white women. Like, how's that going to pull over? You know, just put a sick beat over it, same thing. And everybody's like, oh my goodness, like, who are you? Like, you're, you're a fraud, you know? But then he was like, all right, so let's talk about black people killing each other. Let's talk about not treating the women right. Let's talk about over-sexualizing our men and our women and put a sick beat over it. What do you guys say? Everybody's quiet. Of course. Of course. Just like that uh, experiment Jane Elliott does. What is it, the blue oh, eye, brown eyes experiment? That was one of my favorite <laughs> things I've ever seen. And the fact that Oprah had that on her show, how long ago and no, and why i'm not trying to say we're going to have like this huge like change but mm -hmm. after seeing that study you would think people would be able to empathize more maybe they didn't get to everybody like they should have <laughs> so maybe some people didn't see that episode and need to go back and <laughs> go back and look at it and also another thing um that i noticed you know a lot of people don't really like to address the issues and the truth yeah you know that's another problem with our our uh, nation as a whole mm. you know especially when it comes to, to politics they rather bicker and fight mm -hmm. while americans are out here struggling to survive right because they don't have to worry about that you know they're out of no. touch so they don't no. they don't really get it because up at the top it's green yes can you make me money like that's really the conversation i don't really care if you're black or white or whomever yeah. if you can make me money then that's what's going to talk first and foremost yeah. or be a power yeah yeah oh yes you know, money and power, right? Yeah. Cream, you know? But at the end of the day, it's like, when I look back at those things and I sit there and say to myself, like, wow, like, we already have had these conversations time over and time over again. We've done the experiments. At some point, you get to the point where you're just like, are people just not trying to understand or are we just going about this the wrong way? And a lot of times I think to myself, I think we're just going about this the wrong way. You can't fight this head on. Like when it comes to internally and in our community, yeah, we gotta go head on. We have to talk about what's bothering us. How can we be better? How can we treat ourselves? You know, like, you know what I mean? Each other better. Yeah. Because I can tell you- Ourselves um, too. Because I can just give you a quick little example. You know, like I was a season ticket holder for the Commanders, right? Because I just met a lot of really cool people around here. Okay. So I got a chance to go to a lot of their games this season. Okay. And a lot of times, you know, of course, when you get to go through a certain gate, yeah. you know what I mean? Like. A lot of people don't look like us. So you go through a certain gate. This is true. And believe it or not, the people that don't look like me, you know, they'll just politely ask for your ticket and they'll, you know, they'll scan it and you go along. But more often than not, I'll go through the same gate, you know, thinking it's going to be the same employee and it's someone who does look like me and they seem to be like more short with me, more, you know what I mean? Are you sure you're on the right line? Mm. You know what I mean? Even telling me to go to another line and, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, I was here like seven Sundays already. <laughs> like, this can't be real life. You know what I mean? And then I'm, and, and I'm always, I don't just walk through life and just think, oh, okay, that was just one example. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, obviously it's gotta happen a few more times just for me to just, you know, just cast them all off. It, it could've just been that one person having a bad day. But no, it, it's happened enough times where I had to just sit there and say to myself, why do we do that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, like, I call it the Samuel Jackson effect, you know, from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. Django, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. You know, Little like, uh, I didn't want to use the other word because they're trying to, you know, get move past that. I got you, I got you. Um, but you know, house, you I, know, I think, yard. I don't know, I think it's the way some of us have been conditioned because we don't, we don't know any better or we don't think about it. Uh, I don't know. It's... I, I really can't can't say why it's just I just can't believe it because it just goes back to hey we work together more support each other more so and you know don't be upset because you see me doing something maybe you're not able to do yet because you don't know the sacrifice and the work or the hands I had to shake or the rooms I had to be in or the, the people, I, I, put in yeah, the people <laughs> I had to, to talk to or whatever the sacrifices yeah. just to be able to walk through this door you know because you you might have to do this same thing one, one day. day if anything 
you should be asking me, hey, like, right. how did you get here? What did you do? And not saying you need to follow what I did step by step, but you'll have an idea of what you need to do or what you may need to do to get where you're trying to go. See, I love that you said that because I'm, ve I'm a very intentional person. You know, I, I really don't do things arbitrarily. I do things, you know, because it has a purpose. And if they had to ask me that, I'm probably one of the few people that would have been like, you know what? A Sunday where I'm not able to take anybody else, I'll take you. Like, I would do something like that. Yeah. So I guess that's why it bothers me even more because I'm just like, not that you should be treating anybody like that, but I'm just saying, like, you, you just never know who you're treating like that for no reason. Right. Like, you know what I mean? And the right. thing is, I'm sure it never even crossed their mind, you know, to the people that I'm speaking. I'm sure they just, this is just a job to them. And you're just and you're just paying attention because you'll watch other people who don't look like you, oh, fumbling with a ticket, and they're just, oh, just go ahead, just go ahead. And it's like, <laughs> hey, it's, swipe, like, yeah, you know? Yeah, but it's just, you know, it's, it's sad to see, but it's just... Like with me having a brand, it's just like someone has a question for me about like how I got started, mm -hmm. and how I do it, you know, how do I come up with my graphics right. and everything. Like I asked you. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't mind sharing the game. Right. Like I'm not going to do your business for you. Right, right, right. But I don't mind like telling you like how I got started, why I do it, you know, maybe like you know distributors I use, like how my business model is set up and things like that. Cause I'm still trying to figure it out too. Right. And, and it's funny, sometimes people that have come up and talked to me and asked me, they look at me like I haven't figured it out. <laughs> and I'm like, no, like I'm still <laughs> trying to figure it out. You know, uh, how- You're just to, doing it. Yeah, you, you have to. Um, Cause I think like growing up, we were taught, oh, you always gotta have a business plan. You always gotta have a business plan. You always gotta do this, you always gotta do that. But if you wait until everything is perfect, quote unquote, you'll probably never get started. Right. You know, it'll it'll be years and then you'll get sidetracked and everything will be laid out. You just never did it because it wasn't perfect or it wasn't where you thought it should be. Because when I started seven, seven artifacts, I had no clue what I was doing. Right. Um, really, I started it just to put my poetry out there on posters and canvases. Right. So people, you know, can hang it on the, on the wall. Right. I have an Etsy store. I'm working on my website now. But I have an Etsy store right now. If anyone nice. wants to buy any merch, it it's, under, it's under the number seven, seven artifacts, LLC on yes. Etsy. Uh, be on the lookout for the website. But also, um, yeah, I was, uh, I don't know what I was talking about. What was, what was I talking about? <laughs> so you were merch. just pretty much talking about how when people ask you a question, they talk to you like you oh, have yeah, it figured right. out, right? Yeah, and I didn't. So really, I was just trying to sell the poetry first. Mm -hmm. I added a couple shirts up there because the first one I had up there was with this design and then another design I don't even use now. And, uh, you know, I got good feedback on that. And, you know, just being honest, more people will buy clothes before they buy a poster. 100%. So since... Um, this poster I, was kind of back in the 90s, probably. Yes, yes. Um, that's, and once again, that's why I try to think of, you know, other ways to, to get it out there. And that's why I do the short films, because most people are visual. Yep. And it's like, hey, even if you don't want to read it or put a poster on your wall, you can still go look at my short film, like, subscribe on YouTube, okay. Seven Artifacts <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, go check me out. Uh, but it just started off with that. And then, then I started getting good feedback. And then people was like, oh, are you gonna have this in the living room? Are you gonna have it in this color? And then I started, you know, mocking up some stuff, playing around with stuff, getting some samples made. Next, you know, I'm doing hoodies. Next, you know, I'm doing hats. Uh, next, you know, I have a cell phone case with my logo on the back. It's just, you know, adding more stuff and, you know, people are like, oh, I like this one, you know, where can I order this from? Or do you have it on you? This, that, and the third. So, yeah, yeah I, like I, keep, I just figured out to go. Yeah. Keeping busy breeds success, you know? Okay. And especially if you're able to sit there and think to yourself, okay, I know what my talent is. You know, I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. You know, just being self-aware in general and just not being afraid, you know, because a lot of people ask me, like, how'd you get started? I'm sitting here, bro. I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, I have a store on Etsy as well. Still trying to figure that out. It's all, it's it's a game, bro. Like, it's it's a game. You do have to learn to love the process. There's gonna be ups and downs. There's, 
like hopefully as you get more experience you could hope for more ups and downs but at the end of the day if you're if you're not feeling that pressure then then what are you doing like you know you're supposed to be like trying to challenge yourself every day trying yeah. to figure out how to do different things you know um i'm on a journey right now you know i'm constantly all over the place i'm trying to interview more people like yourself you know right. up right. and coming you know um because you have a lot of game you know that a lot of our viewers can definitely you know um, hold on to because at the end of the day nobody just really starts off with all this all this cash and all no. this know-how you no. know you may have the cash but you ain't gonna have the know-how you know right. you it's all trial and error you right. know like you're, you're literally creating your own blueprint right now you know right. and you can only tell people about your experiences but you also have to let them know like hey you're gonna have your own experiences and that's good that's a good thing because that means you're gonna be able to tailor you know customize it to your own liking you know or right. to the people that you're serving so I totally get what you mean like and it's great all the work that you do and just thinking about you know how this community our community the black community and how how we can progress and how we can get better and a lot and I truly believe a lot of it is internalizing a lot of things that's been going on lately and how can we turn that into positivity like that's really what it is for me how can we be positive yeah it's yeah it's it's been really bad like for hundreds of years and that's definitely you know not giving it it's just due but at the same time it's like when are we gonna be like okay how we've been going about things is probably not the best way you know how can we really reach people through music through poetry through art sneakers designs clothing restaurants all black owned restaurant that we're in right now yeah you know um and nothing I want to say that I should have said at the top of the show, but I would like to give a huge shout out to New Orleans Bistro, Cajun Cafe, blessings to you guys. This is an awesome spot. You guys got to check it out, okay? Um, it, he's actually coming from a long way, coming all the way from Richmond. Yes. Uh, hopefully you're going to get to check out the food. The food is phenomenal. I've been here with my mother. You should come here on Saturdays and Sundays, especially for brunch. You know, you got to have the bottomless, you know, um, champagne. <laughs> you know how it is. Oh. <laughs> you know how it is. Okay. It's, it's amazing. Chicken and waffles, you name it. The owner is great. Tisha, I appreciate you so much. Um, but to get back on track, um, just doing this, sitting here with you, you know, sitting inside a black-owned place. This yes. It was a very nice place, like by this, the way. Right? Like I this. Was very nice. I was impressed it's, when I walked in. Yeah, it's, it speaks volumes. It's the reason yes. why I chose this place, not just because it was a black owned place. It was just, it was because the inspiration, you know, it's it's New Orleans, you know, theme. You know, so a lot of the time, you know, a lot of stuff is going to be Cajun. You know, you're going to look around, you're going to see trumpets, you're going to see, you know, trombone, you're going to see all the New Orleans, you know, you're going to kind of forget that you're in Fredericksburg, Virginia, um, which is right. very nice because right. <laughs> it's not very easy to find a place like this, you know, especially me being from New York and all, but yeah, but like I said, to get back on track, um, it just kind of just ties it all together and that's exactly why I decided to choose this here. I just chose to have you here as a guest thank, and thank I definitely you. appreciate you you know um, not only sharing your story but taking the time out to talk about some real issues that affect our community and trying to figure out how we can pay it forward how we gonna you know not only mark our own legacy but how are we gonna build that legacy so it outlasts us right right because there's so many different um, avenues that you know we can have an impact like whether it's uh, right entertaining mm -hmm. Politics, uh, being a teacher, you know, you know, being in some, uh, in this, you know, being in the school system in some capacity, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur. It's just, it's just, I just feel like there's so many things that we can do, you know, because right. everybody isn't always going to be out there, maybe you know, march and, and protest and right. you know, uh, hold the signs and you know, uh, I don't know. I just feel like there's so many different ways you can have an impact to move the culture forward. And I'm glad you said that because this also brings me into my next topic before I um, close this off. Okay. I notice a lot of athletes, black athletes in particular, um, we talk about sports and obviously everything in between. Gotta get to that. You know, but, gotta we, but, we, but we gotta get it in a little bit. A lot of athletes that are black do feel uncomfortable speaking on issues such as this or such as, you know, whether it's 
um, social injustice, whether it's you know the mass incarceration, anything you know like redlining, all all these different things that you're going to experience while being in the black community. And I'll ask you: Do you feel everybody is expected that looks like us? To, to speak on these issues, to use their platform. I'm gonna tell you, first of all, that I don't think so, because I, I feel like everybody, like you said, has a purpose, right. and their purpose may not be public speaking. Right. But I'll hand it over to you. I feel like there's an expectation for the top athletes to be, you know, to speak and uh, to address social justice issues. But like you just said, that's not, everyone's strength and you may have that one guy that may not get you know they may not be in the news conference or be on tv talking about it but how do you know they're not going back and doing the work in their community and maybe you just don't see it on instagram or you don't see it on the news because more than likely even before social justice social justice came to the forefront uh Athletes have charities and foundations that they give back to Always. their communities. Yep. Um, and I know at one time, a lot of people felt that the athletes shouldn't play or speak out more and do X, Y, and Z. And I'm just playing devil, devil's advocate here. But also, if we're going to move the needle forward, what's the one thing we always need to get things done? <laughs> Well, you need protests, that's for sure. Need that, but what, what's the two main things? They basically go hand in hand with you need money, everything. You need resources. Thank you, yeah. money and resources. Yeah. So if you don't have those things, how are they gonna get these things done? Right. How, how are we gonna move the culture forward? You know, because I know it's like, oh no, they shouldn't play until things change and blah, blah, blah. And you know, maybe the NBA did kind of have them, you know, by the neck at one time. Oh, and maybe it would have been good to see if they follow through with that. But at the same time, if no one's making money, no one has the resources, things that, that, that were already in motion aren't getting done anyway. Who's those charities, yeah. Exactly. And also, um, you know, like you say, it's, it's, you just got to have it. You know, how, how are some things going to get done? Yeah, so, that's why I truly believe in that. Um, I only spoke on that because I know Draymond Green, you know, he's, he says a lot of things, but uh, that was one of the things that, that he said he felt like. And I had to actually think about that for a second because I did believe, you know, at one point that, yeah, if you're black, no, you should speak up, you should say something. But but then when I hear about the Kyrie Irving thing and I hear about a lot of, a lot of people probably, I'm not going to say that they shouldn't speak because that's not right. But I mean, in terms of, you have to be very careful in the society that we're in because yeah. at the same time if you're trying if you're ever in a position where you're trying to uplift you know one side yeah. and put down another you're literally like kind of just scratching out your whole point you know what i mean you're gonna right. lose a lot of people when yeah. you do that you know and whether whether no matter what you believe at the same time you know um that's never going to be the way to go you know <laughs> especially if you're of a faith you know, believing in God and different things, you know, if God is love, right? So by you doing the opposite of that, you know, kind of, kind of putting more hate out there to uplift your own, that message will always get lost. There's always, there's always a way to articulate yourself, you know, especially knowing the platform that you have. I think a lot of our athletes, you know, like Kyrie Irving, because I spoke about this on, on one of my episodes, you know, at the same time, I was like, you know, you want to be happy that guys are speaking up, they're speaking their mind, but at the same time, you do have to be careful and you have to do your research. I'm a I'm big pet peeve on that because I feel like, especially a guy like Kyrie Irving, mm. one of your resources aren't a problem for him, right? No, it's not. <laughs> you probably could have, you know, not. shut down a whole university and had a whole yeah. <laughs> speaking to about, you know, whatever the things, whatever you wanted to get across, right. you wanted to make sure it's done in the right way, in the right format. And I get it. A lot of people are kind of just fed up and they kind of just want to have their opinion because they kind of want to take the, you know, I'll say the, you know, the early Malcolm X, you know, way to go about it, right. you know, but as he even learned, that's not the way to go about it. If we want real change, right. you know, you have to find some way to kind of meet in the middle. And what I mean by saying all that is maybe if you're an athlete out there that has a huge platform, 
maybe you don't have to really, you know, say too much, but you should put your resources towards someone who can. You know, if you can't be the one to be, you know, to sit there and articulate yourself in a certain way, because not everybody does well speaking in front of a lot of people. And not everybody does well being able to handle the ridicule that comes with it and, and still be able to play their game. And the actions mean more anyway. Right. Uh, because actually, you know, like I said, being involved with uh, the youth or being involved in uh, lower income communities, like actually putting in the work, that's the where it's, it's, it's really it. done. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, we do need the people out there that will go out and speak because people always like need strong speakers to get that motivation and to get that fire burning and things like that. Yep. But some of us, especially like myself, if there's an opportunity, I'd rather just do the work. I don't I really want to sit there and talk about it. That's why I write. I really don't perform that often. That's why I do short films and stuff oh, like gotcha. that too. Because I'd rather like do it. Right. You know, I feel like actions speak louder than words. And not Definitely. saying words aren't important because you know, words have influence too. Oh, yeah. Words have power too. But Easy. I'm just more like an action person. No, like, I, I just think it's better, you know, people do something. And also, to circle back to your earlier point too, I also wanted to add in too, a lot of people forget these athletes have families too. <laughs> and a lot of the time, they're not just possibly taking care of their wife and kids. They're oh, probably taking care of mom, yeah. dad, Cousin Ray high school, Ray. High school coach, barber, you know, who knows? Yeah, trying yeah. to look out for mm -hmm. everyone because right. so, like, so many people probably, like, in our families and their families are so behind the eight ball. Like, you become that breadwinner. Like, right. Think about how many generations people have been set back. We already worked for free. <laughs> then we, we weren't paid when we were supposed to be paid in probably most cases. Then... Is, is sometimes it's hard to get promoted working that job that you have for 20, 30, 40 years. So mm -hmm. when you have someone in the family that does make it, guess what? Then you're that person taking care of like, oh, I need a car. Oh, I'm trying to start this business. Oh, I'm trying to do this or do that. It's a burden. So, yeah, so people need to remember that too. These athletes and entertainers, you know, they, they have families and they have responsibilities that they're taking care of as well. Because once again, they're probably the first person in their family to uh, probably touch a million dollars. Oh yeah. Probably touch a quarter, a quarter million, million dollars. dollars. Yeah. You know. To get it even further, or a billion dollars. Exactly. Yeah. And generational probably, wealth. Yeah, they're probably the first ones, maybe to even go to college just so they could play for a year or two to get to the NBA or get to the NFL. Like you know, people don't realize like the circumstances a lot of these athletes and entertainers come from. Yeah. You yes. know, because I'm from 757. Like, I've heard the stories about Allen Iverson. He comes Ooh. from nothing. Oh, I've yeah. heard the stories about Michael Vick. Oh, he yeah. comes from nothing. Right. You know? So, um, even Pharrell, I think him too. Missy Elliott. Mm -hmm. Missy. Yeah. Um, you so. got a lot, Virginia got a lot of talented people, you know? Oh, we do. <laughs> we do. We, we got sure. a lot. That, that's why uh, Pharrell made the festival that's what we call it something oh, yes, in the water yeah. because it's something down there it's a lot of a lot of talented people and i feel like if uh more people probably uh came together and i think even pushing t said this if dmv came together like 757 richmond oh yeah northern you know, virginia oh, dc maryland actually came together you know we could probably be like how atlanta is or was or how texas had you know the torch at one time Right. You know, so. But see, but see how a lot of our problems are more internal right now. Yeah. You know, that that's why we got to fix that internal problem for us to be able to, because you're right, there's, there's nothing that we can't do at this point. You know what I mean? Like, is it going to be a little harder? Of course it is. Right. But we've already, we've already understood that from, you know, from our parents' generation to it. Right. But they've gotten through it. Right. And now we just got to keep pushing it forward. Like, you know what I mean? We just got to yeah. keep pushing that needle. And, and just to give you a point about, how athletes go to go through so much that we can't even like Amari Stoudemire. I was watching one of his interviews maybe a couple years back. He said he had 21 phone lines, like cell phone lines. He's responsible for really? 27, like 21, yeah, people's phone phone bills. That's a like, massive can you, phone bill. Can you imagine that? Like, nah. you know, you complain about your little family plan every right. now and again. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, tw 21. 
Like and, that was his responsibility. And he was probably only 21 <laughs> at the time when it happened because I think he went the NBA at an early age. Huh? Did he yeah. go to Stratton High School? I, I want to say he did because I don't remember what college he went to. So yeah. I want to say, yeah. I don't uh, think he played in college. And he went no. straight out. Yeah, he did go straight out of high school, I mm -hmm. believe. So Yeah, he yeah. was one of the big centers. But yeah, that, that, that's you got crazy. Dwight, you got Shaq. It, well, no, yeah. Shaq went to LSU. But yeah, you did have a lot of a lot of guys who actually, you know, that's either what, one and done or. Yeah, that's right. all it said. If I ever became famous, I think I would change my number. <laughs> and starting off, the only people that I have it is my parents and my closest friends. You have to. Maybe a couple family members. You have to. You know, because then everybody is going to want something like invest in this, invest in that. I have people ask me that, and I'm not even rich. <laughs> I've had people ask me that just yep. just because they've seen some of the things I've accomplished personally. Yep. You know, if I still gotta get up and put the clock every day, I'm still trying to work on <laughs> right. my brand. Exactly. And. You know, people don't understand the struggle. Nah, they don't. And and like I was saying earlier, you know, sometimes people look at my brand because you know I have nice uh, merch and you yeah, know my you my per my professional setup. Well, yeah, because you saw my setup when you came to uh, what was it, Kids Mania? Yeah, Kids Mania, yeah, man. And you know, people are like, oh, you're so professional, you got it together, blah blah. blah. But no, yeah. I'm I'm still, you know, <laughs> trying to make money back. I invested, right. still trying to figure out how to make better social media content. Still trying to uh, create more because I have topics I want to write about, but I still have to make the time to sit down and write. Oh, so yeah. between doing the poetry, the clothing, the short films, now I'm even working on greeting cards, I'm trying to create my website, um, even putting, uh, even uh, put my store on eBay as well. Just trying to do all those things, it, it takes a lot of time. Like people don't see the work in the process, like. You know, work nine to five, but then, you know, probably six to nine, six to ten, you're working on your business, and then on the weekend, doing pop ups. Oof, yeah. You so know? you're traveling, like it's also the yes. more, it's also the, the self motivation part that people don't get about um, entrepreneurship. You don't realize that when you work for yourself, like I do, you have to put in so much time, you have to put in so much effort, no matter what goes on around you, yes. you still have to find yourself staying grounded. And trying to do whatever it is that you do which brings me to my next point guys out there stop asking for deals stop asking for discounts <laughs> that's not helping <laughs> and i'm sure you can agree to that i'm sure you've had people try to you know you know what i'm gonna be honest though for the most part heck, well yeah i would say this by everyone as far as friends and family i haven't had anybody ask for discount okay it, that's actually been pretty good i've actually had really good support from friends and family, especially those close to me. They haven't asked for a family discount, or I knew you back in the day, <laughs> or you used to practice on me in the garage right. when, when you were trying to become a barber. I haven't had that. <laughs> I did have that have that. I did have that happen a couple times with a couple people I didn't know because sometimes you have people that have come to you and be like, oh yeah, if you sell this to me for cheap, you know, I'm around certain people. If they see it, they're gonna want it. But it's like, I don't know that. Like, right. yeah, like you, you're doing me a favor and how do I know that you, you're an influencer like exactly. that or you have an impact like that? Right. Because sometimes, you know, or even a lot of times people will tell you that, but they're just saying that, you know, just to get something from you. Of course, trying to finesse it, you know? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, no. no, not doing that. But no, I've actually had pretty good support. Um, I haven't really had to, People had issues with uh, my pricing on items per se, especially since I have a good quality product. Yeah. So, yeah, that hasn't been too much of a problem so but far. But that's good though. That's so good far. Because so. I, know, I know that's like a lot of a problem in our community, and I actually just, you know, overheard like different businesses and different things like that. Yes. I always notice that's a, that's a big problem in our community. You always. know what I mean? Like, or, or you rather support, you know, the people who are already big already exactly. made it before supporting someone problem. you know like that's, that's just trying to trying to get it out the mud you know yeah and and that is a problem uh because my motto is it's like i didn't have to pay you i had to pay somebody else <laughs> so i might as well support you right, right? you that's know that's just the way it is yeah like nah don't worry about the discount like it's supporting you you can take the extra money put it back into something else so yeah, yeah. I, I definitely uh get that now yeah it's so. just like, i know that's like a a hard thing but um but just to kind of go back a little bit on like um athletes and what they stand for and or whether they should stand for things um 
Do you remember hearing about Jonathan Isaac on the Orlando Magic? Um, not a guy that you'll hear too much about, but I'll give you a little context. So he was one of the guys who played in the bubble on the Orlando Magic. This is right in the heart of George Floyd, right. you know, um, Ahmaud Arbery, all around, you know, and, and that's you know. when they were, right? And then he me. stood. He then was the only one that stood. Yeah, yeah. He was the only, he was uh, the only one that stood. Yeah. Now, I can tell you with full transparency, true honesty, I did not like the fact that he was the only one who stood up. I mean, he's almost seven feet tall, so with everybody kneeling and him being the one standing, you can imagine how awkward that must look. But at the same time, um, it took me a while because I think I realized that um, you just because just because some just because there's a problem doesn't mean there's only one way to go about it. So it took me this long. Just a couple of, just last week, I'm always in the bookstore trying to up my game on whether what athletes are going through or psychology, one or the other, that's usually what I do. So I happened to pick up his book. I didn't know he had a book out. It wasn't very well marketed, obviously. Really? Hey, I should have brought it with me, but it's called Why I Stand. Oh, wow. <laughs> I literally went through that book in a day and a half. I will not tell you a lie. Um, it actually changed my perspective, which is not very easy to do if you know me. Um, but it changed my perspective only because I allowed my mind to be open to be to being changed, and that was because reading his book, I understood where he could where he came from. I understood his story more, okay. which is very unique. Um, he's actually a minister now. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> he okay. still plays in the NBA, if I'm not mistaken. I know he's had a bunch of injuries, but um, that knee thing is unfortunate. Um, coincidence but he actually wrote that book during his injury you know okay. um he actually met his fiance married her um and i'll tell you this i'll tell you an interesting story and this is what kind of like really grabbed me right um more spiritually more if you're leaning towards faith you'll see you'll see why so this was a guy who was still trying to fight for playing time this is a big thing among athletes you know if you're not really like one of those top top stars that you really yeah. hear about because I'm oh, sure yeah. a lot of you guys are probably googling him but don't really know what I'm talking about but um he lives in, he lives in a building like most um young athletes just trying to get his you know his legs underneath him just trying to get started doing his day-to-day -day life there was this guy that kept popping up on him lived in his building kept just asking him questions how is he doing how is he feeling because he always seemed to kind of just be moping around but it was just like one of those guys that you don't really feel like talking to. So he kind of just like, you know, you get, he got stuck in the elevator with him one time. So it, it ended up being an extended conversation more than he would have liked. But okay. at the end of the day, you know, he kept walking away or whatever. And then the guy one day was just like, oh, let's go to breakfast. Let's go to breakfast. And then he's like, no, 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 I don't really have time for that. Whatever. I got to go to practice or whatever excuse he made up. And he and then he said to himself, he was like, you know what? If I see this guy again, because he kept seeing him on such a regular basis, and then he didn't, and then he went a very long time without seeing him. He was like, you know what? If I see him, I'll say, let's go to breakfast. So sure enough, he saw him again. They went to breakfast. They started speaking of things. He started speaking of faith, and he was like, I don't really know about pastors too much, but you know, all I know is they they like to take your money, you know. And and um, the guy was like, he kind of ignored the comment, and he kind of just said, well, you know, I get it. Um, one day we should do something really big, and. And um, this guy was actually, Jonathan Isaac, he was actually really big on charity. So he was like, yeah, we should do, I should do something big. I just don't know what. And he's like, I'll, I'll keep brainstorming it. He's like, all right, whatever, we'll go to lunch whenever. They don't see each other for a significant amount of time. They decide to go to lunch. And he was like, you know what? I was thinking about giving a bunch of burgers to the homeless, just randomly. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll go to McDonald's and I'll just spend a bunch of money and, you know, just start handing them out. And, he, and the guy was looking at him like, burgers? Like, no. Like, you got to give them a nutritious meal. You got to do it right. If you're going to do it, do it right or don't do it at all. And he was like, all right, let's set it up. So they literally went to Sam's Club. They brought all the things that they needed to buy. Um, they, well, <laughs> Jonathan actually did. It was like $700 bill. And then the guy um, went away and he didn't see the guy for a couple of days. So he was like, good job, Jonathan. I just brought this man a year's worth of food, you know, but he was like, whatever. I guess that was just... Um, chalk that up to like you know don't trust people um he gets a call in a couple of days and the guy was like i have a date a venue and a place where we're gonna um be the homeless like you said and he was like what 
he got there the whole setup was gorgeous it was set up he had caterers he had the whole nine tables all set up for everybody so Jonathan was serving them but he was just in complete awe of how this guy was not only true to his word you know he actually was very intentional very you know sympathetic about it you know um kind of like a man of God right so he was like wow like thanks for you know helping me put this together that felt really nice maybe we'll do something later and he was like yeah yeah he was like oh but one day you should um you should come to my church you know the pastor's great you know the congregation is great they have a lot of great things to say mm -hmm. you know and maybe you can um you know speak one day you know just to give him all these great things and he's like all right well maybe we'll see so he happens to show up on Sunday and the guy was like, oh, I'm glad you came or whatever. And John was like, okay, cool. Let's go. You mind if I sit in the back and you can sit next to me? He was like, yeah, yeah, just give me one second. The guy throws on a robe and he stands up and starts preaching it with the pastor <laughs> that he was actually, you know, interacting with that whole time. Oh, and wow. I just remember reading that and just saying to myself, like, wow, like I even got chills. Like, and I'm not even like that super religious. I'm more spiritual than oh. anything. But that was like one of those moments where you kind of just like, like, wow. I think that was his, I, when I read that, I think that was like the moment where his life changed. Yeah. You know, his teammates oh, yeah, only knew him as like, you know, a Hennessy and Coke guy. You know, when it comes to like the clubs and everything else, you already know how it is. Right. And he talks about how he invited his teammates, you know, for, for him to speak one Sunday. None of them show up. Oh, man. Media got hold of that, so you already know what they must have said about his teammates and things of that nature. But... Um, but just to, you know, kind of giving you like a long winded walkthrough of his journey and how he got to the point where he stands on love, like the way he interprets the Bible and the different verses and, and how he's been able to get through life has been through God and understanding that more hate is not going to help. And I guess he didn't like the, the riots that were going on. He didn't like the message of necessarily putting down others in order to bring one up his thing was kind of like we've all had so much hate and nobody's wrong is worse than anybody else's wrong like yeah. at some point we all need to heal we all need to repent nobody repents any differently than another you know what i mean and that sort of aspect that's just where he's coming from yeah. and he was just kind of saying like i think we all need to come from a place of healing and if we don't we're gonna keep suffering the same way we've been suffering and that was that really spoke to me because it took me a while to kind of like really digest it because on certain pages I was kind of just sitting there and kind of reflecting on my own life and what I think about the four or five hundred years of slavery and everything and I'm just thinking to myself like how can that compare you can't compare that like of course they were wrong but at the same time where has that gotten us <laughs> you know what I mean so that's why that's why he said he decided to stand he decided to stand on God he decided to stand and pray actually when he was being condemned I his, that. you know his yeah. teammates didn't want anything to do with him they felt like it was a more a team thing and yeah. how are we gonna look if you stand and we're all kneeling and one thing I did learn I'm like because I'm always a team person I, I used to play basketball I was on a team and I understand what it means by being in unison and what that means you know um, but at the same time a core value like that he, he supported them kneeling, so why couldn't they support him standing? Mm. So I think that's where I kind of made the compromise even with myself to say, wow, like how is how are they more right and he's just 100% wrong, you know? Or, or is it somewhere where they just have to meet in the middle and he's just coming from a different perspective? Yeah. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want what you want. Yeah, intentions were so strong then too. Like everything was still yeah fresh. So it's just like uh, and he leaned on faith. Exactly. It's just like <laughs> yesterday um, when I was in service uh, listening to my pastor. Shout out to Motivation Church RBA and uh, Pastor Travis and Brittany Jones. Uh, but it's just like when he was preaching yesterday, and a big divide that he's seen and that we all see is with politics. And the problem is, it seems like people put their faith in a party, a politician, especially a certain candidate at times. Uh, Even people of faith yes, will put their faith in. Exactly. And that's where I get exactly. a little mixed up about. And, and the focus should be, and even I had to remember this, and not when it comes to politics, I had to remember this when it comes to, like when you don't uh, 
like certain things going on in church mm -hmm. or your church isn't perfect right, right. or you find out that people in church are not perfect you know or they sin too they make mistakes which is yes. why he made that joke about the pastor stealing money yeah exactly like you know yes people in church cheat yes people there are people in church that use drugs or abuse drugs abuse alcohol may have had an issue with domestic violence may not be there for their children may have been divorced you know just so so human. many issues yeah they're human yeah yeah um but the point is he said we will all be a lot better if we just focus on god and that's the purpose you know because even in going to church the purpose more so for that is just community right like building relationships with people and stuff like that and also another purpose to go is to serve god but the main focus is i'm not saying you have to go to have a relationship with god a relationship with god is something you have to develop on your own right that's personal um but he was basically saying like the country all of us would just be better off if we focus more on god and stop focusing on focusing on uh political parties certain candidates you know because you know neither one of them are 100 percent right Neither one of them 100% wrong. Now, right. maybe one side is more wrong than the other. <laughs> I just throw that joke in there. But, you know, I just look at both of them. Right. And because I know, like, normally when you get in an argument sometimes with a certain side, or maybe either side, they're going to be like, oh, well, you know, you probably support and love this person so much. And, you know, what have they done for you, blah, blah, blah. But what they don't understand is like, no, I don't worship that that candidate like you worship this candidate right or whatever <laughs> like honestly i don't care for neither one of them right if honestly really want to break down yeah. exactly like no like you're you're not well no they're not god like they don't determine the outcome of my life god does he already laid out my path your exactly. path everyone else's path like right. stop focusing so this much is trivial on people. in comparison yeah. to the big picture yeah <laughs> because you know this how many people is in America? Because they don't have time to focus what, on... What, 300 million now? Yeah, just... Something like that, just, 350 million? Yeah, you, you think uh, either one of them was focused on every, each and every last American in this country? <laughs> Over 300 million people? No. You know? Like, you, not even the, half that vote, so I wouldn't even pay too much. <laughs> exactly. That's not possible. Right. It's just not. So people need to focus more on that and stop worshiping, you know... I, Kind of like in biblical times, false idols. Don't meet your hero, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, just like I love Jay Z, I don't worship him. Yeah, exactly. I'm a big fan of his. Right. You know, but uh, if I had to have someone that I look up to, I look up to my dad. I look up to other positive male influences I had uh, growing up. Shout out to my uncle, R. Neil Williams. He's not my real uncle, but he's someone that was a mentor to me. Uh, Mr. Tony Taylor from St. Thomas Amy Zion Church. Like I had a lot of positive male figures in my life, including my dad as well. Right. So- You had the community. Exactly, exactly. Definitely come from a strong, strong community. Uh, my mom made sure that, my dad as well. So really the people around you that you talk to and deal with on a regular basis, that's more so what you should be focused on. You need to be focused more on your community because really politicians can only do but so much. Yep. The real work is done amongst the people in the community. And that goes for any community. Right. Our community, white community, Hispanic community, oh, Asian yeah. American community, LGTBQ, did I say it right? Yeah, I'm not a very good lesbian, so I'm sure you're saying it right. I have no idea. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sometimes I, no, I, I mix up the I mix up the letters too, and, okay. they, and they add on another letter every every now and again. So they did because they just I'm added not, on a new yeah. one. But I just yeah, want to I make sure. I just want to make sure on PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to offend <laughs> anybody. Yeah, yeah, no, no, or whatever. No, it's, um, it's, it's all up here, all four. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, communities come together work together because like i said if you sit down and actually talk to people and get to know them understand them stuff like that you'd be surprised how much you have in common and also on the flip side we all don't have to be friends like, everybody don't have to be the homie right we don't have to be besties right you know but i feel like 
we can respect one another. Right. We can have respect for one another. Like right. we we don't have to be friends, but if we're in the same community. It's like say it for the people in the back. Like, yeah. You know what I'm like you know, you can speak like, hey, how you, how's your day going? All right, good to see you, man. Be blessed. Right. But we don't have to go to the bar and get a beer later. No, exactly. You know, we don't, exactly. we don't have to go shoot pool together. We don't right. have to go to the game this weekend together. Right. But you shouldn't be disrespecting me, and I shouldn't be disrespecting you just because of your religious beliefs. Your sexual beliefs, or sexual orientation, right. or the color of your skin, That's it. or political beliefs. That's it. Because at the end it. of the day, either one of these parties, they're not going to do that much for you. No. They're too busy arguing and bickering over the wrong stuff. Who lied about this? Who had classified documents? Who slept <laughs> oh, yeah, with this porn star? Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. who cheated on the wife? <laughs> you know, uh, someone had a drug addiction problem. <laughs> this person tax evasion. Yep. I mean, who these cares? people. Yeah, these people are just like yeah, us. They, yeah. they, you just you just listed the typical American. Yeah. At one time, <laughs> one oh, so of you us had, you human. Then. Okay. Yeah, one of us has done something that could have got us in trouble or wasn't our right. brightest moment. Right. Because I think there was a study out there at one time, and I could be wrong because a long time ago, and it's it's not intentional. But I think they said like every day, like the average American breaks five laws a day and doesn't even realize <laughs> it. And it may not be anything major. It could just yeah, be like speeding. oh. Yeah, speeding, you didn't put your turn signal yep. on, yep. or uh, maybe you, you filled out a document wrong, or yeah, you found something wrong. It's not intentional. Right, but you did something wrong. But it that, happens. That and you were people, expected to know about. And yeah. people make mistakes. Like, stop putting your faith in these politicians. They're just like us, if right. not worse. Right. You know? So, But that's okay, because like you said, they're human. <laughs> the best thing you can do is do what you need to do. Focus on you, focus on your family, focus on your community. That's it. Serve God and just try to be the best version of yourself you can be. That's it. And if you make a mistake, do better next time. Learn from like, it. Learn from it. That's learn all you from can, it. That's all you can do. It's like sitting there trying to judge people, trying to. A lot of times when people do that, I just feel like that just means there's some insecurity in you. There's something that you're obviously not. You don't want to focus on because it's so much easier to focus on other people's problems because they ain't, you ain't got to do no work but sit there and point it out and laugh. But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like that's not doing anything for you personally by you judging someone else so I, I was never really a fan of that I, I was always very big on like you know what okay they did something wrong okay depending on the severity of it like you know but I'm not going to sit there and judge it like you know what I mean I'm just not going to condone it I'm probably just going to wipe it away and just keep it moving forward like a lot of people just like to fixate on things especially in politics yes. fixate. I'm like people forget we we live in a very capitalistic society Yep. Is it great if you're trying to make money? And is it better than being somewhere else? You know, I guess that's up for debate. But when it comes to making money, I don't think there's any other place else to be that's best but here. So, but when you live by the money, yeah. you, you're going to kind of get what you're asking for. And there's always going to be like that negative side to it because it is a country who does worship money. They may not outright say it. They may say that it's a Christian country and they have their beliefs. But at the end of the day, when you start to see things very contradictory, um, um, contradictory of those beliefs, it's because money comes first. Yes. And once you once you understand that, you don't have to necessarily live by it. But if you're in this country, you're gonna have to understand it. Yeah. And then understand that you can remove yourself from it and still have your core values. Right. You know what I mean? And that, and those core values are self values, and there are values that only should extend out to your family. Anything beyond that has literally nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? I just feel like a lot of people take their core values and extend it out to everything, you know, besides their family. And it's like, why? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why? You, you will never convince somebody's core, like some, like just their core values, meaning if, if they had to go that deep to dig that, fur, that further inside themselves to change that, yeah. like that's literally gonna wreck their psyche. They're gonna need help. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like people don't understand, like that's legit, like, they're gonna need like some serious help. Right. You know what I mean? And that's a big thing. Imagine like someone rocking, like shaking your core. You know what I mean? Cause then it's gonna be like, you don't know which way's up, you don't know which way's down, which way's left, which way's right. Life's hard enough. It is. Then for someone to just shake what, what keeps you grounded every day. Right. You know what I mean? That's like your equilibrium. So understand when you shake someone's equilibrium, they're going to be off. You know, like that, that's, that's one thing that I always try to preach. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people probably do need to have that shaken for many different reasons, because maybe they might have biased views that may get spilled over into politics, right? Into policing, into real estate, you know, into our school system. 
Yes. Those are the things that, but that's why we have so much turmoil right now because a lot of people's core is being unbalanced, it's being turned upside down. Yes. And that's why we have to be very steady in how we treat each other just to tie it all back in because if we're not, we're literally teaching people how to treat us. You and I, the way we interact. And there's people from a different race watching us. Yes, they are watching us. They see how we interact. You know how I know that? Because when I sit there and watch, you know, an Asian family, I'll sit there and see how they interact. I love the fact that they respect their elders and bow for them. Like that. That's like, I'm like, right. Right. I'm in awe, honestly. Yeah. I watch. I'm paying traditions. attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, if we're... You know, if we're shooting each other, if we're talking down to each other, any chance we get fighting each other, ridiculing each other, you know, constantly putting each other down, the world is watching. So, you know what I mean? So it's like, stop. The way the way you can tell people how to treat us is how we treat each other. We start treating each other better, watch. Just watch the world and see if there's a change. That's very true. That's very true. All true. So, yes, we all should do better, treat each other better. It'll go a long way. It'll go a long way. It's, you know, ripple effect. <laughs> and that's uh -huh. me paying it forward. It's your girl, KDOT. Thank you for being with us. Thanks again, Gordon. Not Appreciate problem, not it. Problem. He travels Thank very you. far. You know, I didn't and... go too far. <laughs> so, oh, real quick. Yeah. Um, just, uh, if you're interested in checking out my brand, my store is on Etsy. It's 7 Artifacts LLC. Website coming soon. And all my handles are at the number seven artifacts. So please check me out, like, subscribe, follow, everything. Click on the link in my bio, IG, and it'll take you to everything, all of my links. And don't forget, go Giants. <laughs> Imagine a world where you can never be as good, never be as smart, never be as trusted, never be as reliable simply feeling you never belong just because of the way you look would you sacrifice everything